So what is the difference between a person trusting a poll and the results of a poll and not trusting it? Well, you might think, oh, it's the methodology, how many people they talk to. Maybe the source, you know, is this a reputable, long-standing pollster with a good track record? Well, maybe that has some influence, but unfortunately, some of it is just simple human psychology and it's a little bit depressing. A study from the Annenberg Public Policy Center in University of Michigan found that Americans are more likely to dismiss the results of a poll if they find those results unfavorable to their political leanings. An excerpt from the actual study says, in a nationally representative sample, we find that individuals disproportionately find polls more credible when their preferred candidate is leading. And that is just a reminder that we are at the end of the day, simple, simple animals. That's all that we are. We, we think that things are true if they feel good. Oh, if it's nice and it makes me happy and warm to think that it's true. And that has nothing to do with whether or not a poll is credible. Now, it's not to say that, you know, it coming from a particularly reputable pollster doesn't matter at all. It does. And they do have advice, which we'll get to. But if I like the results or not, that should have no impact. I'm sure that even for me it does. But we gotta we gotta get better at recognizing these biases so that we can weed them out. So let's let's turn to a little bit of positive information. They they do have some advice. I went on to find that publicizing a poll's methodology is the best way to dispel illusions of partisan bias in objective sampling of the population. And they say specifically, this is Ozan Kuru says, if people focus on these objective aspects of polls, they may be less likely to immediately dismiss results that they find unfavorable. And hopefully that's true. I'm sure that they have some evidence that that's true. And for regular people, maybe like. If an article breaks down a poll, it should definitely give a link to the raw data, to the methods, all of that so people can actually look at it. I know that 99 out of 100 won't, but it should be there, but that's not gonna work for everybody. So they say that this will help to correct for partisan bias. But unfortunately, even when the methods are there, it runs up against partisan bias. So in recent days, I know nobody has cared about that, but I broke down in detail an op-ed for The Hill and a Sean Hannity segment, both of which discounted the results of a poll because from what they said, it talked to too many Democrats and not enough Republicans. And so if you're a regular person listening to that or reading that op-ed, you might think, yeah, wait, why did they talk to more Democrats than Republicans? How could the poll possibly be reputable or reliable if they did that? But here's the thing, it's not like you had to go to the raw data. In the articles they were themselves linking to, it talked about how the results were weighted to correct for the fact that they talked to too many Democrats and not enough Republicans. It's not like people whose literal career, their life's work is crafting polls, don't know that that could throw off the results. And so they have statistical methods to fix for it. But either the writer of that op-ed and Sean Hannity don't understand what that means. And that's a very real possibility because people love to talk about polls without having any idea how they're actually created. Or they can't be bothered to read about it. And so it's great advice to say that that should be there. That'll help for some people. But there are some partisan actors that don't care whether a poll is reliable. They care about a narrative that they want to help sustain. And sometimes I'm gonna keep it real. I feel like a crazy person when I see people talking about polls. I, I believe it's safe to say that I'm literally one of the only people in media who has taken multiple courses in how to create and run and analyze polls. It's not a required thing in journalism for people to understand that, to, to, to do whole segments on it, to write up op-eds about it. But we can learn about polls. We can learn what makes for a reliable poll and what doesn't. And maybe for a regular person, it doesn't matter. They're not writing op-eds or whatever. But if you are led astray by commentators that are trying to hoodwink you by pretending that some polls aren't reliable when they are, well then you're gonna run up against reality on election day. When you believed you thought what was go you knew what was going on, and then when the actual vote comes in, you're gonna be shocked. I don't want people to go through that sort of psychological stress. So do a little bit of reading about how polls are created, how to analyze polls. It's out there if you wanna learn. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.